welcome to the Instant Classic Wrestling <coughs> Podcast, the only podcast that is always an Instant Classic. And you're... And we want to punch Jim Cornette in the face repeatedly until he bleeds because he's stupid. Hot tag! Hot tag! Hot tag, okay, I got you. I got you, I'm coming in, coming in hot. You know, I'm going to hit that Big E spear. We'll see you on the flippity-dippity. Oh, yeah. What is going on, good people? It is time for the Instant Classic Wrestling Podcast, the only podcast that brings you a pit stop review to WrestleMania, baby. I'm excited, man. I don't know if this was a pit stop or a pee break or a rest stop, but it won't know roadblock. This thing was something. Um, I, I think, like, if it was just called WWE Roadblock and was, like, some kind of random thing they were doing on the network, fine, cool. You know, I'm excited, you know, yay. But... This was the roadblock to WrestleMania, which makes me think, okay, so this is going to set up WrestleMania. It set up WrestleMania about as much as Fastlane did. We, we were about as confused going into after Fastlane as we were throughout this show. Not even after this show, throughout this show. But um, let's let's start, though. Let's, let's just get on into it. Um, there were some video packages in this in this show, but they were just kind of like reviewing the rivalries, kind of making the show, I guess, feel bigger than it was. The stage setup was kind of house show-esque. Um, it was similar to the Madison Square Garden show. Um, comparing those two shows, the Madison Square Garden show is much better. I watched it actually last night, which is funny. But, um, you know, the Madison Square Garden show was actually, was actually much better. But um, any thoughts on any of the video packages? Any of them just hit you? in a particular way where you were like, yeah, or the show overall, you know, wh whatever you want to talk about. Uh, this was the diarrhea on the road to Disneyland. It's like you were on the road to Disneyland. You're so excited. And then it, it hits you. You hit you. Uh, no, I, I think Fastlane – set up maybe a, a little bit more because at least fast lane there was like build up to more than two matches there was a bunch of matches on this card no build up made no sense which is why this felt like it was a house show um and, and like dj said if they just you know set this up as a special on the network wwe roadblock had nothing to do with wrestlemania it would have been fine um, or if this was just a house show that they decided to televise on the network, a network like we said we wanted to see sometime, that would have been fine. But the fact that they said this was, you know, roadblock to WrestleMania, why did Sami Zayn almost job to Stardust? What does that have to do with WrestleMania at all? Um, I, I, I don't even know. I don't even know how to respond. He's like the issue i suppose but um yeah like i was expecting like like maybe even some like precursors to wrestlemania just like some matches that may maybe even ended in dq like i was expecting uh chris jericho and aj styles to go at it just because you know obviously that's going on i, I just didn't understand it because even at a house show like the funny part is even at a house show the matches make more sense than this um even at a house show they continue the feuds like i went to a house show back when Randy Orton and John Cena were feuding and they had Randy Orton versus John Cena for the title, I think, you know, so they like, like the matches make sense when <laughs> even at the house show. So I don't know what this was, but you know, anyway, let's, let's jump right into it so we can, you know, get it done um, as quickly as possible. But um, we started out with the new day versus Wade Barrett and Sheamus. Um, and at this point, and this happened to me throughout the night, I don't know. Um, what was going on with the network tonight for me at least, but my, my, my video would just cut off. Like it would just go back to the main menu, the main network menu. And I was like, okay. Um, and this happened like three times in the first five minutes. And I was like, I don't know why this is doing that. So I then had to set up like a backup on my computer. So that, that actually turned out to be a really good idea. So if, if that ever happens to you, be sure to set up a backup. Um, <laughs> the new day premiered their new, uh, 
Bootios, as they call them, I think they're actually selling these on www.shop.com. I'm not even joking. Yeah. Um, yeah. which is fine. Like, don't don't get me wrong. I, it, it's funny. Like, <laughs> I mean, the promo was hilarious. I definitely liked it. Um, I, I think as far as the New Day is concerned, I'm still loving all that they're doing. But I think it was a good idea to get um, a lot of these guys kind of out there to the, the fans and stuff because before in their – previous gimmicks they weren't talking as much and even it, it at least shows they have some sort of character within them whether it's the new day character it may be still silly but it helps them still cut promos i feel like i i, I definitely am still loving um the new day but um first off xavier let's get to this trombone playing sir just don't let your tone spread you know i mean i get it you know you're trying to play as loud as possible let everybody hear but don't let the tone spread don't don't do that that's not that's not good that's not good um, to the ears, but um, Kofi did something weird where like he was trying to jump over Sheamus and like clipped him in the head, and then he ends up getting thrown out of the ring. Um, Woods would end up distracting the ref, and then uh, Kofi would take out Sheamus, and then Big E would hit the big ending uh, for the win. I thought this match was actually pretty good uh, for for a match that I wasn't really looking forward to, I guess, because I, I still don't think this is the right combination of the League of Nations. But um, you know, I thought this match was pretty good, but still. Um, what is this setting up for the New Day? We're still very confused on what, like, tag team match we're going to get at Mania for the titles. And please don't put it on the pre-show. Don't disrespect the tag team titles for the third year in a row. Just don't do it. But anyway, uh, Casey, thoughts on this match? They will. They will. I mean, they always put it on the pre-show. Every time. Or the Intercontinental title. One of those is going to be on the pre-show. Um, but... <sighs> Just the fact that they actually sell the box of bootios on the web. And it's not even just the box. Like, you can buy just the box, or you can get the box shirt combo. Why? Because <laughs> like, um, you don't want to be booty, Casey. Come on. I mean, I, I guess. But um, I'm not saying this was a bad match. It just... It felt like it was raw, and it, you know, it felt like it didn't set up anything. We didn't have any, you know, anything with Enzo and Cass at the end, which I was like, okay, that's fine. Enzo and Cass have a match later. Maybe they'll do something with them later. Like maybe, you know, the New Day will come in or, you know, make fun of them or something for not, you know, winning the NXT titles, and then it'll set something up. We'll get to that later, whether that happened or not. And if you watch the show, you know. Mm. But, I mean, this wasn't a horrible match. If, if this was just on Raw, I would be fine with it. But the fact, again, that they, they're building this up as, you know, roadblock to WrestleMania, I expected something big and something, you know, surprising. And nothing. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, for those of you wondering about the Budio's short shirt combo, because I might have to get that. I might have to get it. Um, <laughs> it is thirty four ninety nine, um, or thirty one ninety nine if you're a youth size person, um, or or if you're a woman, also thirty four ninety nine. Just just so you know, just in case anyone, it was just in the back of somebody, everybody's mind. And they're like, you know, we might have to get this, you know, this combo. But um, anyway, let's continue. Um, we get a Heyman promo. It, it was a Heyman promo. It was good, obviously. Um, it was similar to the one he cut at the Madison Square Garden show, I felt like. Um, then Chris Jericho would get, would, would cut a promo, a great heel promo, actually. Um, I don't know if he went too far with the Brett comment. He was like, you want Brett? Well, you're never getting him again. Um, which, you know, eh. Um, it's a little on the, the fence there with that, considering there is a possibility that they could never get him again, you know. Um, so I was kind of like, eh. But, you know, he made up for it with the Canada Stinks and Toronto's the anus. <laughs> and then we get the uh, a whole chance, which was funny. I was like, I see what you did there, Toronto. I see what you did. I see. Um, but, you know, this match wasn't bad. I just. Once again, we just don't know why, uh, where Jack Swagger came from. Um, Jack Swagger just appears randomly, um, and usually around a title, but this time around, you know, Y2J. I, I don't, I don't know why. You know, 
I don't know. I don't even know where he came from, to be honest. But um, I think the fans actually started booing Jack Swagger like halfway throughout this match, um, which was which was kind of interesting. Um, he locks in the Patriot lock. Um, Jack Swagger does, and uh, <laughs> Jericho fights so hard to get out. He did. He fought so hard, so diligently to get out. Swagger gets locked in the walls, and uh, immediately, I think he died. Um, immediately, he just taps out, and I'm like, what? <laughs> but anyway, um, any thoughts on Chris Jericho versus Jack Swagger? Uh, hashtag random ass match. Um, what didn't make sense to me is Jericho, first of all, does a promo both about ditching AJ and about how Canada is, you know, so bad that he left and blah, 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 and was dissing Canada the whole time. And, and you know, his opponent isn't even – it isn't AJ. Isn't even somebody Canadian to kind of defend Canada. No, just a fucking random match against Jack Swagger out of nowhere because – I don't know. Um, I, I know <laughs> me and DJ were joking about how, you know, they keep randomly giving Jack Swagger pushes for about three months and then give up. Um, so, I mean, maybe they're, you know, continuing or starting a new one. I don't know. Um, again, it wasn't a horrible match. It was just, it didn't make any sense. They didn't even try to make it make sense. They didn't even like, make some bullshit storyline they just went with it and i was like okay but why why is chris jericho facing jack swagger where is aj why is aj not at this show what what like i don't know um and just the fact that he you know jack swagger did like give up like that in the walls it just it made him look so weak, um, which sucks because he is, he's still really good in the ring. It's just, they don't give him a chance. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Just kind of, just a random match. Yeah, it was, it was quite random. I don't, still don't understand why it was (laughs) on the card, but, um, next we get a match that I got really excited for. Um, we would get a video package on Enzo and Cassidy. The only thing I really noticed was the changes in Enzo. Um, they showed like a little clip, like talking about how they were like the longest team that's been in longest tenure team in NXT, and like Enzo's changed so much just from that when they first started teaming to now. But uh, Enzo and Cass versus the Revival. Um, I, at least the video package trying to hit up, hit on it, and the commentators trying to hit on it why they're called the Revival. I still think we need some promos telling us why they're called the Revival. Like, it's not hard. All they got to do is say, the tag team division is dead. We need to revive it. It's not that difficult. And probably with more enthusiasm or something. You know what I mean? Like, that's all they need to do. Like, they just need to say something simple like that just to let us know. Why Why are they called the Revival? Well, I don't know. That's just the name we came up with. But anyway, um, I love that, you know, Dash and Dawson kind of take their time. I think that's always a good heel tactic. Um, in matches, especially when the fans are ready to get the match started. And, you know, Dash and Dawson are in the corner trying to kind of talking it out a little bit. I think Dash and Dawson, honestly, would be perfect with a manager. Um, I think that would just be cool. They could even slow it down a little bit more um, just to continue to build heel heat on them because I like Dash and Dawson as a team. They're, they're really kind of throwback type of a team. And a manager would even add to that throwback factor that they have. Um, but uh, the distraction gives Dash and Dawson the control. The aided hip bump, I, I, that's what I call it. I don't know what to really call it. Um, basically, Cass throwing Enzo as far as he can. I uh, I love that. Um, and it looked ridiculous tonight. Like It looked like Enzo was in the air forever. I, I, I love that move. Um, I don't know if you caught this, but I, I saw the alpha male come out for a second there. And uh, who was it? Dash? And uh, he hit the pounce. He, I saw it. I saw it. Um, he hit the pounce to stop Enzo from, from uh, tagging in Cass. I saw it. I saw it. WWE don't lie to me. I saw it, um, but uh, Big Cass comes in and, you know, he, he does his thing. You know, he, he dominates pretty much. Um, and then, like, at the end when it felt like Enzo and Cass were going to win, um, Cass gets called the Shadow Machine on the outside. The diving DDT was epic by Enzo. I love it. Um, he gets 
He rolls up Dawson for a near fall, really, really, really long near fall. Then we get a super shatter machine um, as a, I think it was Dawson jumped from the top to shatter machine Enzo um, for the win. I, I, I definitely, I, I, uh, I like the, the, like, especially the psychology at the end of the match. Um, just keeping Enzo that much closer, keeping Enzo and Cass that much closer. But I do think it would have been a, a good idea um, to bring out the new day and be like, you know, you know, tell them how much they're wasting their time or, or something, you know, maybe they're not being positive enough, just something like just a teaser. Like it didn't have to be much. You know, it could have been just a little bit and they can build on it on raw when, you know, more of the world is probably watching. Um, but, you know, I, I definitely thought this match was good. I, uh, I, I enjoyed it. Um, you know, it, it was, it was one of the, one of the, one of the good matches, especially once it picked up and got down there to the end. But Casey, did you see the pounce? Cause I saw it. I I was too upset to see the pounce because what why why WWE I, I knew Enzo and Cash weren't gonna win the titles that's been established that they're not gonna win the titles they're just gonna go to the main roster but why don't you set these things up like like DJ said just a simple you know come out and make fun of them for losing not winning the titles or you know you're not good enough or you're too booty or you know you need your bootios something it they promoted so booty was the issue they promoted them they could have just brought it back up <laughs> yeah they and they didn't they had the golden opportunity to uh, like, I mean, and I get it. It's fine if you want to set up a multiple man tag team title match. I'm completely fine with that um, if you want to do that. But you got to set up something. <laughs> like, WrestleMania's in like three weeks. Yeah, three weeks. <laughs> three weeks from tomorrow. And this, no. was, this was perfect because it was kind of an interpromotional, in a way, show. You had guys from the main roster and NXT. So the main roster fans could see these NXT guys and they'll give them an idea of what's coming to the, I don't get. I'm curious too, since this was like a, in a promotional type of a show, how do you feel about Enzo and Cassie's pop? I didn't think it was as big as it is in full sale. I, I mean, it could be because, I mean, there are still a lot of people who don't watch NXT. Like, there was some, I don't know if you noticed it, but during their entrance, there was a couple kids in the front row looking at them like, who the fuck are these guys? Um, <laughs> I thought that was funny. But I don't know if it was just, you know, their pop wasn't that big or if it was just, because this was an arena, so, you know, Full sale is a lot smaller, so their pop is just, I feel like their pop is going to sound bigger anyway in Full sale. Because you st you could have the same amount of people cheering for Enzo and Cass at this show that than you do at Full Sail, but just the fact that the arena is so much bigger. But then again, they did have the other show that they were at that was an arena show that they got a pretty big pop. Um, so I, I don't know. Yeah, and I, and I think if you're gonna bring them up, like it, it would be better unless they're gonna surprise us at WrestleMania and bring them up. But it would be better to get them established with the main roster fans before you put them in a tag team title match because the New Day are already established. They're already slowly turning face just because the crowd loves them, um, because they make the crowd laugh. They're the most entertaining tag team on the main roster right now. Yeah, and they need another tag team to work with. And I feel like they could work with, the, with Enzo and Cass so well. They could play off of each other, you know. Um, yeah. If they're trying to keep the New Day more as heels, it would be perfect because I feel like the fans naturally love Enzo and Cass, even though I saw somebody in the chat say, like, they were corny or something like that. Oh, yeah, I did see that, and I was yeah. like... That's that's why we love them. That's what part of why the fans get so behind them because they are corny, but they're good in the ring. They're entertaining. I mean, the New Day is corny, too. It. I agree. I agree. But let's 
get down to the Divas title match. Um, a match that kind of snuck up on us here uh, was Charlotte versus Natalia. The back and forth interview they had was nice, though. Um, I, I kind of wish they would do this more often with uh, with the Divas division or women's wrestling division. Um, just because, like, you know, there, there's just nothing going on. Um, it's either a really weird storyline or no storyline at all. Um, so uh, <laughs> I feel like, you know, this interview was really good. Like, it brought some more anticipation to the match. Um, and I feel like Charlotte and – Charlotte, Sasha, and Becky, it's, considering they have it already set, you know, this could be a good thing. I, I kind of wish they wouldn't even had to defend the title here and actually had, like, a six-man tag or something. I think that would have been cool because they don't, they don't really do the whole six-man or, you know, tag team match before you got to face your opponent, you know, where they used to make you team up with your opponents and see if you could, could, like, coexist. That would have been a cool thing to do and would have got some more divas, some exposure too. But um, th- this match was actually really good. I enjoyed it. Um, first off, JBL, he was like, he was talking about how Charlotte, you know, is the greatest Divas champion. And I was like, but JBL, when Nikki Bella was the champion, I'm pretty sure you said the same thing. So I need you to make a choice, JBL. You can't be wavering on who you think is the best. Like, that's not how it works. Um, but anyway, the tiger got in control, you know, pretty early. Um, and, but Charlotte would try to lock in the uh, figure eight. But uh, Natalia would get out of it, or she wouldn't. She would lock it in, but she tried to readjust, and Natalia would get out of it. Charlotte actually hit natural selection, which is a move she never really hits anymore, which I hate. Um, and then uh, Natalia would end up hitting the sharpshooter, and it was really good selling by Charlotte here. And uh, Ric Flair would end up getting involved. Charlotte would end up winning with a roll up. Um, I, I, I mean, I thought this match was really good. It, it still. <laughs> I don't know why they're keeping Natalia strong because she hasn't been on TV in forever. Um, but you know, it kept Natalia looking like like she could really compete for the title. Not that she's going to, but it kept it kept it in the back of your mind, I suppose. Um, any thoughts on the main event? Not the main event. The the main event of the Divas Division of the evening. There you go. I caught myself. The only. The, the only reason she was on the card is because it was in Canada. That's the only time Natalia ever gets to wrestle is if they're in Canada. Um, but I couldn't help but wonder, is is the title on the line? They, they barely mentioned anything about the title being on the line during this match. But they kept talking about how Natalia is related to Brett and talking about Brett like he died. Oh, I was wait. like, the man's Natalia, still alive. Brett? What? Is Natalia related to Brett, though? I'm just wondering. I, I believe he's like her her uncle or something like that. Like she, I heard she has a dad that used to be a wrestler too, but they don't they never mention him. But I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, they they kept talking about Brett like he died or something, and I'm like, yeah, he had cancer, and they found out that he's fine. Like he's good. He had surgery. He's fine. Like, what What the hell? Um, also, they kept talking about Brett and Ric Flair. I was like, I think they only faced each other, like, once back in 93. I, I don't they, – they never really, as far as I remember, had a big feud. So I don't know why they're talking about Brett and Ric Flair so much. Um, they, they should have focused more on this match to – kind of make this match make more sense, which it didn't. Um, there was just no point to it. Um, again, like like DJ said, it was a good match. I'm not going to take anything away from the match itself. It just made no sense. Um, just a random match out of nowhere. Uh, again, it's sad to say it, but it's because they were in Canada. That's the only time Natalia ever gets TV time. And it sucks because she is one of the best – divas that they have on the roster um i i, I agree i i don't even I, I don't even understand i was actually like i was getting i was surprised they didn't promote um sammy Zayn on this show though or, or somebody from canada on the show that's a face i just, i was just surprised just because like like the two people that were from canada who actually faced off were you know 
where it weren't even promoted. And I was like, okay, then. But anyway, um, next we got Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper <laughs> versus Brock Lesnar. Um, so Bray Wyatt cuts a promo. It wasn't even one of his best promos. It was just like, it was a house show promo. Um, he he cuts, <laughs> cuts a promo. And he says, you know, something about family and we're going to do this together and whatnot. And uh, Luke Harper, he, so basically it turns into a handicap match with Luke Harper and Bray Wyatt versus Brock Lesnar fighting out of the Conqueror's Corner, um, if you didn't know. But, um, yeah, this was pretty much Brock Lesnar destroying everything he saw. Um, Luke Harper did, you know, kind of get some shots in. He did he hit a nice suicide dive. You know, but Lesnar just pretty much suplexed him, uh, did some suplexes to him. He uh, pretty much dominated him, then hit, hit an F5, and then there you go. It was over. Bray Wyatt didn't even touch the ring after his promo at all. A match they promoted. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I don't know why Bray Wyatt wasn't in this match um, or why they promoted it as Bray Wyatt versus Brock Lesnar if they weren't going to put him in the match. Um, th- I feel like this situation honestly would have made more sense if it would have been like Triple H, like Triple H doesn't show up to the show because he's the authority. He's above this show. He doesn't want to face Dean Ambrose, but Bray Wyatt, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I don't know. This was a, th- this was a match I think we were all looking forward to. And then it wasn't even good because like, and not that Luke Harper wasn't good in it, but it just wasn't good because. Why? <laughs> Why didn't Bray Wyatt wrestle in this match? But anyway, thoughts on this match? Yeah, this this was basically a one-on-one match that turned into a handicap match that turned into a jobber match. Um, I don't know. I was I was excited for this match. Um, I, I knew they were basically just gonna bury Bray Wyatt because that's what they do with Bray Wyatt, even though he's amazing, and they don't care. But this could have been a good match, and then WWE decided against it. Like I don't understand. At, at least if you know there, there could be you know reasons why he wasn't in this match. He could be. He could have an injury that we don't know about. He could. You know, there could be something. But if there is, let us know. Let us give us a reason why he's doing this. Or you know, I, I don't know. Um, I mean, unless they're going to have something with Luke Harper and Bray Wyatt where Luke Harper starts to realize that, you know, Bray's using him and they kind of, you know, do a, a, an inter-family kind of feud thing. I don't see why they did this. There was no point to it. I mean, they could have at least made Luke Harper look a little bit stronger than he was. I, I, I agree. Um Justin and I were talking about this before. Like, why? Like, if you want the Wyatt family to be like dominant again, number one, you got to start doing stuff with Bray. Um, number two, I feel like, and I don't know how you feel about this because I feel like this is kind of the only way they can do it now, just because they just I don't know why they don't they feel like Bray's not good enough or whatever because he puts on good matches every time he's in the ring, especially for a bigger guy. Um, but I, I feel like if they added, because I think they're going to need a new another member to do this, but or uh, probably a couple of more members, because I don't know how they're going to reveal Sister Abigail to us either. In fact, that's still a wrinkle, still a mysterious kind of thing within the Wyatt family that we don't know about and we're all like wondering about it. So I think it would be a cool option if they maybe had Bray go after the world title had the rest of the wives go after the rest of the titles and they basically just kind of take over and then the key to sister abigail is the titles or, or something like that because and then that would, would kind of show that they're still strong because they all have titles i don't know like how you feel about this but I, I think and i've been thinking about the whole sister abigail thing in general is i think ironically nxt is heavily a like contradicting or not contradicting but making it difficult to do a sister abigail angle because i think to me 
Sister Abigail needs to be somebody that we don't know, like at all. We we don't need we need it needs to be somebody we don't know from NXT. It needs to be somebody just completely. I mean, it can be even be somebody from the Indies, but it needs to be somebody that we're not you know not on NXT that we're not like expecting. Like if it turned out to be like Sasha Banks, we would expect that. If it turned out to be like you know Alexa Bliss or somebody. I feel like it wouldn't have that same effect as if it was just somebody completely out there that we were not expecting at all. But I think, you know, all the divas on the NXT roster were, were expecting some time to come up to, you know, the main roster. I, I think that's kind of a problem with the, the sister Abigail is it's kind of, I love NXT, but it, it eliminates surprise, you know, debuts, I think. Yeah, I, I, I agree. <laughs> I, I agree with that. Um, next we had Stardust. It's the same as Aang. For some reason. Uh, I don't even know what they're doing with Stardust at this point. Like, some some of these guys I forgot were even on the roster anymore. Um, because we just don't see them anymore. But, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to give you this match first. Just because I... <laughs> <laughs> this WWE why why I mean I couldn't understand why in this match this match was so heavily in Stardust's favor like Sami Zayn goes from basically you know returning to Raw and you know uh you know, completely dominating Kevin Owens, you know, and coming really back really strong to barely being able to deal with Stardust in a week. This wasn't, this isn't like, you know, a couple months or a couple weeks, a week. He literally came back to Raw on Monday, was really strong when he returned against Kevin Owens. He wasn't in a match with Kevin Owens, but. You know, he returned and looked really strong against Kevin Owens. And in this match, it looked like he could barely deal with, deal with Stardust. Um, and, and, you know, that's nothing against Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes is a, a good in-ring competitor. It's just they need to, if they're going to use him, they need to get rid of the Stardust character. It doesn't make sense anymore. It doesn't work. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know. And this match just, it made no sense at all. And it wasn't even really a good match. I felt like this wasn't one of the good matches on this card. What do you yeah, think? I, 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 <laughs> um, I don't know. This was just I, like you said. Like Stardust was in complete control. Why? <laughs> um, I just didn't understand this match. You know, I love. I love Cody Rhodes. I, I mean, I even like the Stardust thing, but eh, like, why? Like, what is the reason? Um, and, and also, I just didn't understand. <laughs> JBL was talking about. Uh, JBL said a lot of dumb things tonight, but JBL was talking about you know Sammy's other persona, and uh, I was like, but how? I was like, so he's in a match with Stardust, and Sammy Zayn's going off the deep end. That, that's that's how that works. <laughs> I, I just didn't understand. They talked about Stardust being crazy for so long. And then, like, randomly tonight, cool. they're like, oh, yeah, Sami Zayn's the crazy one. No, I understand what they were talking about because they, they were talking about uh, basically his his other gimmick back in Ring of Honor because um, they, they were kind of explaining the Olay chance. But it still made no sense to fans who maybe aren't, you know, Ring of Honor fans or, you know – don't know his past. It, it's just too confusing. You know, they needed to, to, I feel like they needed to explain that more. Like his past gimmick. Don't, I think persona was a bad word usage. Because persona makes you think crazy. Um, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Um, next we got the main event. Thank God. We got the main event of the evening. Um, Triple H. Came out first for some reason. 
Um, but I'm not gonna complain about that tonight, I suppose. Versus Dean Ambrose for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Um, this match was actually really good. I I actually really enjoyed this match. Um, <laughs> I, I love that Triple H is very consistent as a competitor. Um, he rarely ever really changes, which which I like. He he really did a good job of like systematically trying to take out Dean Ambrose, and I really liked it. Um. But Ambrose was also really good with his submission game tonight. And uh, Ambrose would end up hitting the Dirty Deeds, I'm pretty sure, and uh, getting the three count. But his feet, apparently, they didn't show us. They didn't show us, so they had no proof. But his feet were under the bottom rope. And uh, I was like, okay, so Triple H just finds a way to win, right? This is classic, tri- uh, classic Triple H. Typical Triple H. I get it. Um Ambrose would end up putting himself through the announce table. And then um, he would end up running back into the ring at nine just to be hit by a pedigree for the win. I, it was weird. The, the, the psychology of this um, pedigree at the end was really weird because I saw Dean's eyes, like, wide open. So I was like, he's going to kick out. And then he didn't. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, I, I don't know. This match, I, I thought it was really good as a match, but – uh, there just th- there was nothing there, and as soon as they they talked about Roman Reigns' tweet, I knew he wasn't going to be on the show. Um, as soon as they said it, I was like, nope, um, no Roman Reigns, so probably nothing's going to really happen unless Dean wins. Um, but Casey, any thoughts on the main event? This was a good match. I felt like Dean Ambrose really did look better. Than Triple H in this match. But I'm done. I'm done. Dean Ambrose won. And they came up with some stupid storyline. At least if you're going to do that, have the camera at an angle so we could see. Because I was seriously upset. Like, I was mad. Like, and I know, you know, it's, it's, it's a show. They're supposed to, you know get out our emotions and get us, you know, happy and mad and stuff. But why do they keep screwing Dean Ambrose over? I, I mean, and it goes to kind of what um, me and DJ were talking about kind of through the night. Triple H's contract, his talent contract is coming up before WrestleMania. So what are they going to do? Is he going to get a contract extension just so he can – face the or Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, which we don't want to see anyway. I mean, I love Triple H. I've been a fan of Triple H since I was a kid. But I, there's a point where you're kind of like, okay, you, you can retire now and not like – and I mean, there, there's so much, you know, rumors about whatever drama is going in, on in the backstage. I, I think they need to deal with that – more than having him as the he the the face of the company as the champion, um, I, I would rather see Dean Ambrose go into WrestleMania as the champion against Roman Reigns. I think they could do so much more with that um, because even uh, if they're going with a you know somebody going against the, the authority, I, I see Dean Ambrose going against the authority making more sense than Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns seems like the guy that would give in to authority. He doesn't – I don't know. This just – this. Dean Ambrose won. I saw it. I know how wrestling works. One, two, three, you won. That's it. <laughs> like, like when he won, like, like, you know, when the three count was there, I was like – <laughs> but then they were like, I was like, something's going to happen. Like, there's no way he has to <laughs> um, But, I mean, like, that would have been a shocking moment for people, you know? Like, I don't know why they didn't go with it. Because even if Triple H finds a way to get the title back or something, like, just having that there at the end of this show, which wasn't really that impressive, just even if they screwed him out of it, even if, like, Brock Lesnar takes him out, and, you know, they make him, they, they like, his, you know, status is up 
Like his status is like not even it's like in question for Mania and they strip him of the title and give it back to Triple H because he's the authority. Like even if they did that, like imagine the people on like imagine the people watching Raw who didn't watch this show seeing Dean Ambrose come out with the title, even if there was some controversy behind it. You know what I mean? Like like even like I'm fine with them screwing him out of the title. Like that's that's something that like I, I get it, like okay. But I think they should have just went with it. And then, you know, maybe have Brock Lesnar attack him again because Brock Lesnar's not done with him or something like that. Like, and then, like, his um, status for WrestleMania is, is kind of, up, you know, up in the air a little bit. And he has to be stripped of the title. And Triple H is like, oh, well, no one's a champion. I'll take it. You know, so I, I just feel like that would have been a, a pretty good idea, too. I, I mean, I, I don't know. But uh, that's your WWE roadblock. roadblock. Pit stop. Pit stop. Something. Uh, sound Toilet break. break. <laughs> Water break. Um, review. I. I mean, the show just didn't make sense to me. Um. I, I mean, I don't even think it was. Like, I mean, we call it. We, we were talking. I, I made a joke to Casey earlier. I was like, we did ask for more house shows on the <laughs> on the network, but this wasn't even up to the par of a house show to, to me. It didn't even like that's how much it did make sense. Like they just closed their eyes and they were like, "Let's see what we got here today." Okay, Sami Zayn. All righty, let's see. Kevin Owens, nah. Uh, let's see. <laughs> you know, like like they just like pulled random names out of a hat. But uh, I I don't know. This this show was was interesting, um, to to say the least. But um, I don't know. I I kind of hope they do more like shows like this. I guess not necessarily. Like, but I I kind of hope they like make more sense. In the future, because we've asked for more, like just like kind of special events or something on the network, and I would like to see this inner promotional thing kind of do something just to help NXT guys get up there with a main roster crowd. But you know, I uh, I'm excited though, because I think that would help NXT guys translate to the main roster a little bit easier too. But um, any any final thoughts on Roblox? Pit stop. Pittsburgh. Uh, Um, Rest area. Again, I like like you said. If they did more shows like this, that would be good to help you know get get these NXT guys more you know exposure to the main roster. But do more build up to it if you're gonna make it a special event. You know, make the matches make sense. Um, don't just you know grab names out of a hat and you know hope it works out because it doesn't. Um, and if you're going to do a random match, make it make sense. Don't put Sami Zayn in a match against Stardust and make him barely get the win a week after he came back looking really strong to Raw. That just doesn't look good at all. Um, It looks like you're not even paying attention to your own product, which, let's be honest, WWE doesn't pay attention to its own product. Uh, I think the, the writers from SmackDown don't know what the writers on Raw are doing. The writers from NXT don't know what the writers on Raw are doing. Raw doesn't know what NXT is doing. Raw doesn't it's, know what Raw <laughs> The first hour of Raw doesn't know what the third hour of Raw is doing. It's just, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I just thought this was set up Mania a little more. Like That's what I, that's why I was excited about it. Yeah. And like, it didn't at all. At all. Like, I, I don't know. I, like... Trust me, I get it. Like you have injuries, but boo, flippy who? <laughs> like, like <laughs> if you have injuries, injuries. Yes. What, what what I was wor- wondering throughout the show is like, if if you have so many injuries, why would you intentionally set up another show with guys that are going to be in Mania that could possibly cause more injuries? Why would you do that? And it wasn't like they were, you know, casual matches. There were suicide dives. There was high-risk maneuvers. Like, come on. You're asking for more injuries before WrestleMania. Like, do you not want to have a WrestleMania? Do you just want to skip over 32? Just go right to 33? Is that what you're trying to do right now? 32, the unlucky number. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys. Um, Leave a comment. Um, you know about the show. Be sure to subscribe. Um, I'm getting a new webcam. I'm excited. Woo. 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 Um, I, I am. I'm very excited uh, about my new 
my new webcam. There's some times when I watch I watch myself and I'm like, I can't see anything. And then there's some other times where it's actually decently clear and I'm like, oh, I can see myself. Look at that big freaking mustache or something. Like, you know, I'm always <laughs> looking, looking at something. But uh, I, I'm excited for Mania still. Um, it is Mania. You know, even if the two worst teams played in the Super Bowl, I'd still be excited because it's the Super Bowl. But, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens, um, you know. We we complain so much about TNA when they don't uh, when they just throw shows together. So WWE is fair game. And we, it won't be as bad as WrestleMania 11, if you know. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch WrestleMania 11. Oh my why didn't we review that one? Because it's go watch it, and we'll find out why we didn't review it. Go. Um. Also, guys, um, coming up, we got. On our WrestleMania road trip, we have WrestleMania 13 coming up here in a little bit, hosted by our very own, or his very <laughs> own, somebody's very own, Juggernaut 097, uh, Justin, whatever his last name is. But anyway, we got that coming up too. If you haven't already, be sure to do all the things I told you to do already. I'm rambling on at this point, so I'll see you guys later.